Okay, hello everybody, Gaming Trax here, and welcome back to another video. As you can see, we have some more StarCraft 2. This is going to be a TVZ match between the two players, Alarm and Yedewid. Yedewid. Y D I W E D D. I have no idea how to say that, and I'm gonna have to figure out something to say. But um, here we go. Um, we have yeah. So as I said before, it's Alarm versus Yedewid. TVZ and this is a diamond level matchup these are two diamond level players so hopefully this will be a pretty good game um, so anyway let's see they're both scouting here and here we go supply depot going up right now nothing too surprising yet we also do have the overlord with a very nice looking skin actually I'm not quite sure what skin that is but it looks very cool I like how they're talking about their strategies to each other somewhat interesting um, anyway so as you can see we do have uh, just pretty standard stuff going on. It looks like he is going to be putting up uh, probably the barracks right there. Oh, that's also a nice, that's a nice supply depot skin too. I like that. I really like that. Um, we should have the barracks coming out at 150, and there we go. The barracks gets dropped. Nothing too surprising. I like, <laughs> I like all of the talk between them. Um, of course, we do have drones going up, and yep, there again, nothing too surprising yet. I'm still, I'm amazed by these, these are very cool, these are cool skins that they've both got here, I guess that's what you get at Diamond League, like these awesome looking skins, so this one looks kind of weird, it looks like a heart or something, except it's blue, it's kind of, kind of weird, kind of cool, and here we go, we do have an expansion going up for YD, um, that's what I'm going to call him for the rest of the game, I guess, YD, because that seems to be the best thing to do, um, and we're just going to take a look at nothing killed so far, of course. And army supply, worker supply, everything is pretty even right now. Obviously, it is just the beginning of the game. We do have a spawning pool going up right now with the 2 minute uh, two minute 50 mark. Almost 3 minutes, so definitely not going to see an early rush. Um, uh, anyway, we also do have these overlords coming out here just to take a look at what's going on. We're just going to look at his vision quickly. And he can't see anything yet. He can't see the wall up. But he can assume that there's one there. And here we go. Now he's going to be able to see the wall up. And he also sees this marine coming out. The marine's probably going to take out, take out the overlord. And uh, not sure. <laughs> Looks like he definitely doesn't want this overlord to go down. Oh what? Oh yeah. Okay. Looks like he is. What? Oh, I guess he decided not to take out that overlord. There. Kind of interesting. We do have the second command center going down for alarm right now. Um, this hatchery has not yet finished, but it's almost done. Uh, let's see. Also, well, the spawning pool is now completed. We should see some zerglings coming out, maybe, maybe not. Not sure. Uh, at least we do have some marines here. Still no zerglings. He could actually just do a marine rush right now. He could probably win the game since there's absolutely no defense from YD at the moment. Now this is some very nice overlord placement. Actually, I really like this. He can see exactly what's going on, but also his overlords aren't in too much danger at the moment. Though this one might get taken out. <laughs> Looks like Alarm is purposely microing back his units. Uh, to stop them from killing me off these overlords just being kind of nice for some interesting reason these look like some very kind nice marines there and yep so oh so this overlord is going off to the side not going to be quite as useful for scouting this one is definitely scouting um, he sees another barracks down there but didn't get too much information I couldn't tell he might have just about gotten sight of that third one and it looks like oh okay it looks like they're attacking the rocks here couldn't tell what it was command center is nearly done and we do have the second hatchery now in full full swing and we also do have a queen here still very little defense um, we do have metabolic boost on the way hopefully we see some zerglings coming out soon because right now he still has no defense if we take a look at the army supply it's four to six favoring alarm and early game you usually expect to see zerg a little bit ahead at first so kind of interesting right here also um, alarm is going to have three barracks quite early so He's going to look very good. It looks like he's going to be playing quite heavy bio. I know he made some sort of comment about that at the beginning, but I didn't really read what it was. Though, uh, from my initial overview, it looks like he is going to be playing heavy bio. We do have the third command center being built at the moment. And this is actually an quite early third command center, actually, because we are only at the six minute mark. And his second command center has not even been nearly saturated. So, a little bit surprising. We do have both gases fully saturated. Um, 
from Alarm, the YD has not even saturated, oh, he saturated one gas, and that's it. We do have the Baneling Nest going up, so it looks like he might be using some Banelings to get through the wall, and here comes Zerglings finally, we now take a look at Army Supply. Alarm is still a little bit ahead, but finally YD is catching up a little bit more. Um, he's actually got some army units because you have to remember the queens don't really count and it looks like he just ran straight by that marine That's gonna provide some very useful info to alarm that there are um, Zergling I mean, yeah, there are zerglings and they do have metabolic boost at the moment. It looks like that zergling might go down Ooh, that might have been a misclick there on his part because this many zerglings will not be able to do too much damage Especially with this bunker place right here. That is quite good bunker placement. Um, so yeah, we also do have a supply depot going down. Looks like the Zerglings are not moving out too much. He might be waiting for the Baneling Nest to finish. Oh, actually, the Baneling Nest is finished. So, I mean, maybe he's just waiting for more. He probably knows that uh, Alarm has got some Marines. He did definitely see a lot of barracks down here when he was scouting. Also, we do have a factory coming out now at the 7 minute mark, so a little bit late. This Orbital Command here is being used just to manufacture more SCVs a little bit quicker just to give him a small edge up in terms of getting out some income. If we take a look at the income, they're both quite evenly matched. YD is a little bit ahead in terms of gas. Um, it looks like he's actually... I'm not actually sure how he's so far ahead. Um, yeah, I don't know how he's ahead in gas. Except in terms of minerals, Alarm is just a little bit ahead, but still very even at the moment. We also do have the two engineering base. This looks like it's going to be double research gonna be very effective look he's yep so he's getting uh one one and also we do have stim on the way looks like it's being researched in that tech lab also a reactor on this barracks just so he can or actually a reactor on two of his barracks just so he can produce units at twice the rate also the starport is now going up if we take a look at yd's base um looks like he does have an evolution chamber just for a little bit of research he's also got his spine crawler for defense and a lot of zerglings but so far no ro roach worn and also he hasn't um morph any banelings or anything so it looks like he's going very heavy on the zerglings early game and we should expect to see a little bit more coming out soon he still does have control of the zelnaga tower actually he has control of both of them and he also does have these two overlords in very nice position so we have to imagine that he does have kind of an advantage in terms of vision he can see what's going on at the natural here he can see anything expanding out to this space before it happens and then of course he has the zelnagas so he actually does have quite a good amount of vision which will probably provide him an advantage in the long run the factory and starport are being moved over here but it looks like he's going to be putting a reactor onto this just so he can train two medevacs at the same time probably. That could be quite valuable as well. Um, here we go, we do have the banelings going up right now. That is quite a few banelings actually. If we just take a look at the units right now, that's 12 banelings. That will be able to do quite a bit of damage. This is a nice wall, but 12 banelings will make it through. The only thing is with a wall like this, that means that... Um, well, the Banelings will all most likely explode at the wall, unless they're microed pretty well. And there we go. Oh, the Marine goes down just a little bit. He opens uh, he opened the Supply Depot to let something in. Not quite sure what, though. But, okay, so it looks like the Orbital Command is now moving out. But the thing is, I think I think that YD could see that. I'm not sure. But that Overlord might have been able to see it expanding. Oh, but it doesn't even matter. There are two Zerglings there. They're going to see this Orbital Command before it gets down, even. So, this is... Wow, YD's map control is just so good at the moment. He can just see everything that's going on. Now, we do have the Marines moving out a little bit. It looks like they are going to just clean up those Zerglings there. But still, the map control, the map awareness from YD is just really impressive. And as we can see, he is he has got a lot of Banelings at the moment. And he's now got his Mutalus coming up. Um, yeah, so he's got his Spire there. He's going heavy gas now. If we just take a look at the income again, he does have a lot of gas, 600 income. Also, he's got a lot of minerals now because he has expanded to his third hatchery. So he has got three hatcheries in full production, and we do. Looks like we've got a push coming from Alarm. He might be pushing around to the third or maybe to the natural. Not quite sure which one he's going to hit first. We do have some more medevacs on the way. So this is going to look like it's going to be a pretty decent attack. He has left enough troops at home just to defend from any sort of counterattack, hopefully. Uh, looks like you can see there's nothing at the fourth at the moment. We're just going to take a look at his vision. And as you can see, he still can't see anything. And now he's going to start to see the creep. He's going to understand what's going on. There is a third expansion. Here we go. The screen is going to do some damage on the medevac, but not a big problem. And here we go. He's probably going to see the banelings. Oh, the banelings could do a lot of damage. Here we go. Oh, the banelings all detonate. Oh wow, it looks like the Banelings cleaned up most of his army there, and there we go, the Banelings hit, and they have a very nice connection, so it looks like the Banelings just cleaned up the rest of his army, we do have a few more, 
few more units coming around here, and boom, he says, and that certainly was quite a big boom as all of those Banelings managed to clean up the majority of Alarm's army here. If we just take a look at supply, there, um, units killed though alarm did manage to do quite a good amount of damage that was still yd managed to kill almost his whole army we're just going to take a look at the supply here and as you can see that put yd a little bit ahead 64 to 57 army supply but fortunately alarm is definitely doing a good job reproducing these units very quickly um, so he shouldn't be too far behind for long he also does have a lot of siege tanks coming out here and he is researching 2-2 i believe did he just get that up uh, whoops, I just clicked on the wrong thing, but I think he is. Okay, so he's researching 2-2, so that's looking quite good. Also, this Overlord is still here providing vision whenever whenever um, Alarm decides to expand to his fourth. Uh, basically, YD will know immediately, which is going to be quite an advantage. Though Alarm has now taken control of the first El Naga, and there has been a Marine drop. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that guy. Looks like that was a very nice drop right there um, in the main. So that's not going to be nearly as valuable as it could be and he also did lose all those units and I'm going to say that was probably not the most valuable drop in the world. The thing is this, the main is almost nearly mined out, it's almost completely mined out. It's really not going to be that big of an advantage. Also if we look at uh, YD's army here, it's looking quite nice. Um, now in terms of pure supply, Alarm is a little bit ahead but we've seen before these banelings can just do so much damage especially against the bio army the banelings are just so powerful but we do have we do have the army moving out here for alarm it looks like he is positioning himself outside the main base and is he going to move up this ramp i can't be sure he's going to run into this army and the banelings are going to have the high ground this will be if this oh if there's an engagement right now this would hugely favor yd at the moment here we go, it looks like he's moving ahead, it looks like YD is going to micro this, and here we go, never mind, I thought he was going to micro stuff back, but he's not, the Banelings are just going in, and it looks like the Banelings make some nice connections there, cleaning up a lot of the army, he does manage to do a split and save some of his units, but the Banelings just doing so much damage, here we go, they clean up even more units, now come the Zerglings just to do even more damage, the Zerglings do get cleaned up, and now it's up to the Mutalists, but this many Mutalists could most likely take out this army, that was a big loss for alarm there though he does have a lot of units back at home it looks like he is going to bring those out and continue his push oh it looks like he might be going for a drop here we're just going to follow along this here we go it looks like he is dropping off these units that was a very good move there as you can see this is kind of a two-pronged attack at the moment um he's also attacking these rocks looks like he's going to try to take these out but it looks like these units are going to get cleaned up by his whole army here very quickly and here we go we do have another attack going down um, on this third base, here we go, they stim in, but the Mutalists are just there way too fast. This, this attack looks like it's going to get cleaned up way too early, and there is a siege tank inside of that medevac. I'm not sure if it's going to escape, though. Oh, it looks like the Mutalists are going to catch up, and it looks like, oh, the medevac and the siege tank just went down. We do have another command center down here, so he is going to be expanding to his fourth, but this is a lot of Mutalists from YD, and Alarm, he is putting out missile turrets here for some reason. It looks like he is going to be expanding out here, maybe, and then um, he'll have some defense against the Mutas, except, okay, so he's getting up a planetary fortress, not too surprising considering the location. Here is his force at the moment. We're just going to take a look at the army supply, and as you can see, it is definitely favoring yd and those banelings are just so valuable he really alarm really just needs to set up the siege tanks beforehand because that is the only way that he can it's really the only way to take out the banelings efficiently and here we go the mutas fly right overhead and alarm doesn't do anything about it he might have just rallied his units to one place and he didn't pay attention but here we go the mutas are just flying around now it looks like they're going back into the main base not for sure what they're going to do and here we go we have an engagement down there and finally the siege tanks have been set up it shouldn't be too difficult for him to micro back his units if he needs to and here we go oh that's so many zerglings it looks like they probably could be able to take out these siege tanks if they needed to and it looks like the siege tanks are going to go down very quickly it looks like the majority of alarms army actually it looks like all of alarms army was just taken out there we're going to take a look at the army supply and alarm is now at 50 this is not looking too good he is doing very well in terms of economy if we take a look at the income Alarm is definitely ahead in terms of economy, and that is the only reason he's managing to stay in this game is simply because because his economy is so strong, he can just continue producing units. If we take a look at the units killed, look how many units, excuse me, look how many units Alarm has killed, 202 versus 144. Also, we have to, we have to make note of the fact that his drop did not do nearly as much damage as he might have wanted to. He only managed to kill off two, two units, and also, um, 
We just take a look at the unit. worker supply, though. Alarm is ahead, so... Oh, I keep doing the wrong thing. I was trying to cover up the last one by just talking about the... Talking, I was going to be like, I accidentally hit control A, and I was going to be like, oh, look at the worker supply, and then I hit the wrong one again, and it brought it up. But either way, alarm is just doing so well in terms of economy. It's just... It's really the only thing that's keeping it him in this game right now just because he can keep producing the units just more and more just keep coming out and he's just going to keep pushing ahead but he is going to have to find some sort of solution for those banelings there we're going to follow these medevacs as they go in it looks like he might be making another push at the main but we can't be sure here we go he goes down to the zelnaga and he sees this other expansion down here is he going to take this out it looks like he stings in to take that out also the siege tanks have been set up just for any defense this would manage to take out any banelings here, but it looks like there are just way too many things. Actually, the banelings do manage to make it in and take out the majority of the army, but those were some very nice lifts from the medevac, and it looks like those medevacs are going to get away. Quite minimal damage done, though he did manage to deny this expansion down here. The medevacs are just going to fly back down here. He managed to save quite a lot of units, and that is probably going to be his solution to the banelings, but we do have the ultralisk coming out right now. Wow, what is on that ultralisk? What the heck? It's like glowing very strange i don't know what is going on there um but these mutas are just flying around it looks like they're gonna get some map vision but here we go we do have a push coming out here he just got so unfortunate that those units got scouted but maybe it's because of that overlord down there by the base he managed to see those though this is just very good map control from yd and even though he might be a little bit behind actually a lot behind in terms of income he is still doing quite a good job just because he is defending all of these attacks. The Banelings just do so much damage. People seem to not use them quite as much anymore, but they, they do a lot of damage. And we might be seeing a drop coming down on the main, but that's really not going to do... It's not going to do anything, really, if it does go down there. Let me just follow this path. And I don't, I'm not quite sure where he's sending these units, but if he does a drop on the main, it's not going to do anything because the whole main is mined out. There are no drones here. He's gonna drop it looks like he is dropping he might be so he's gonna do some damage on the ultralisk cavern that might go down that's gonna be a little bit helpful for him for a while but that'll be rebuilt quite quickly and there are just not any workers here for him to kill it looks like we are going to have the mutilus coming down just to clean up this attack here there are still units inside that medevac oh that's gonna be quite a big problem because both the medevacs contain units that's gonna be the biggest advantage to the mutilus they managed to just take everything else out that's kind of a problem here we go it looks like we might have another push on the way here and here we go. This is quite a decent sized force, but are they going to be able to deal with all of the Banelings and the Mutas coming out from YD at the moment? We cannot be sure. So here we go. They're pushing into the space here. The Overlord is just so valuable right there. It sees everything before it comes. These Mutas are going to do a lot of damage. These Siege Tanks are just not going to be that helpful at the moment. But here comes the rest of the army from YD. And the Siege Tanks, it looks like the, oh, the Banelings make some nice connections. But the siege tanks definitely were helpful, but here comes more banelings. Looks like they're going to manage to get the surround on that siege tank and take it out. This engagement is definitely favoring YD at the moment. Here we go. Looks like almost the whole army from Alarm goes down there. And it looks like he doesn't have too many units right now. If we just take a look at the army supply, it is 72 to 146. So this is definitely favoring YD at the moment. So if we take a look at income, Alarm is still very far ahead, especially in terms of mineral income. He's doing a very good job. And as I said before, it's really the only way he's managing to stay in this game, just simply because he has a general idea of what um, YD is doing. He, well, wait, that's not what I meant to say. But, oh, that's a lot of bane legs. He, ha he has a lot of income, and he's just able to keep producing units. That's what I wanted to say. Um, anyway, though, we do have a lot of banelings coming out here. These are going to be quite valuable, actually, as we've seen before. Alarm just really, he has no solution for the banelings at the moment. I mean, he does have these siege tanks, but you need a lot of siege tanks set up um, just out in front or out behind so that they can take out the banelings before they reach your main army. So they have to be very well positioned. We're just going to follow this medevac drop. It looks like... It looks like it might be dropping in the main again, but we can't be sure. Yes, it looks like it will drop into the main um, for another time. And it looks like this is going to be a two-pronged attack as this attack goes down here. I don't even know which to follow, but it looks like the medevacs are a little bit behind. And here we go. This attack's going to make it. The medevacs might make their attack first. But this is a very nice two-pronged attack. So he's attacking down here. And also... Oh, this is... Oh, no, those are SCVs. Okay, so that's not going to be that valuable. But this is, this is Alarm's whole army, but he is making a nice attack there. And here we go, the second prong of his attack is doing a very good job. It looks like he made an attack with his SCVs. This appears to be a full all-in at the moment. 
You see him slow, he's behind, but these old ghosts are gonna do a lot of damage. They don't manage to take too many units, the Medvax do manage to pick them off, and it looks like the Mutalus cleaned up the drop that came down there. This is going to be quite a problem for for Alarm at the moment, simply because he does not have enough enough units remaining, and I don't even know if his economy is strong enough to continue supporting this. I mean, he's definitely falling behind on mineral production simply because he sacrificed all of his, sacrificed everything, all of his SCVs. But here we go, this is going to be the final push. It looks like, looks like this is favoring YD at the moment. A lot of, oh, a lot of missing turrets here. They're going to do some damage on the Mutas. The Mutas might manage to make it out. Wow, Alarm is actually doing a very good job with his defense here, but these, no, it looks like, no, it looks like YD's units are just ravaging this whole base. This is just too much for Alarm to deal with. The Siege Tank is going to go up there, but that, that one Ultra alone can probably deal with it. And there are just so many Ultralists on this field. I mean, if there were some Banshees, those could be useful. But there are just also these Mutalists that help balance that. And it looks like this should be GG. This looks like basically all of the troops that Alarm has at the moment. Um... I cannot imagine that he'll be able to pull it out much longer. If you take a look at income, Alarm has now fallen way behind. He's at 180, uh, 400 gas still, but that's just not enough. He's getting out his siege tank. He really needs to put that into siege mode. And he might be able to defend that. It looks like he might actually be able to defend this attack, but now here comes some more uh, Zerglings. These are going to do a good amount of damage. Not quite enough, though. And it looks like if we take a look at the army supply, they're actually quite even now. Uh, wow, that was surprising. Alarm did a very good job of defending that attack, but he is quite far behind now, and he simply just does not have the income. I'm not sure if he has the income to support any more troops. It is just ridiculous. And YD is still ravaging just one of his other bases. There are a bunch of auto turrets that go down. That's going to be very helpful. Except they just don't do enough damage, and these also are going to do a lot. The bio units um, from Alarm can do a little bit of damage, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. These siege tanks might be able to help, but they're too far behind, I think. And um, the ultra is, it looks like that ultra is going to get away and the scan goes down but not going to be too helpful that ultra is going to get away into the main army here this looks like it's too much i think this but actually maybe not this is going to be a very close battle um i i'm gonna say it's favoring yd at the moment but no these reinforcements coming in are going to be very helpful and there are a lot of banelings from yd at the moment he doesn't have as many uh, units like Hydra's would be quite helpful at the moment, but he doesn't have any. These siege tanks are going to do quite a good amount of damage against those banelings. Also, it looks like he is going to make an attack right here, and the altars come in. Oh, that was a very good way to draw out his army and kill a lot of units there. That was very good. YD hit his army back here, drew in Alarm's army, and he managed to take them out there. We do have a few more units coming in. It looks like, oh, is, are they going to do any damage? It looks like this might be the main battle here. Why, uh, Alarm is actually doing a very good job of holding on right here, um, and we do have a lot more units coming in. He must have gotten his economy back on track a little bit. He does have a little bit of uh, mineral income at the moment, finally. It looks like he might be able to take out this hatchery right now, but here comes the army again from YD. He's just doing, oh, he's just doing such a good job of making it seem like his army's gone, and then he just comes in from the side when you least expect it. This is these ultras that look like they might get taken out and the mutas might get taken out as well this it looks like this is now starting to favor alarm actually here we go it looks like there are two mutas left and that's basically it if you look at the army supply it's now 78 to 32 what just happened it looks like wow it looks like alarm just made a huge comeback there that was so surprised i didn't expect that at all it just goes to show sometimes sometimes crazy things happen i mean i thought alarm was very far behind but i guess he did manage to make a very good comeback, and maybe it's just because YD has mined out so many of these bases, I'm not sure how many more units he can make actually. It doesn't look like he's got any army at the moment. And here we go, we do have more army coming out from Alarm. We have some Zerglings, but that appears to be it at the moment. I'm not sure, wow, I'm not sure that YD has the army to support another attack. He just doesn't have anything left. It's now 83 versus 15 army supply. This is heavily favoring Alarm at the moment. This is just, wow, this has been totally turned around. Looks like he's attacking. This is the, wow. That is the last real mining base at the moment for YD. That's going to reduce his income to almost nothing. He is now zero gas income and very little mineral income. Alarm has just gotten so far ahead. He has managed to get back into this game. And now this is heavily favoring him. That's amazing. I can't believe YD just managed to lose his whole army in the altercation over here. And now Alarm is just destroying everything. Also with nothing to mine, YD is just 
he's got very little army. I mean, we do have we have an ultra, a couple of mutas, and a lot of zerglings. I'm not sure that's going to be enough to hold off what alarms got going here. These bio units are just going to be very strong against us. It looks like we're going to move forward. And here comes the altercation, but he's microing the units back. That's probably just going to end up in them taking a little bit of damage. Not sure. And we do have another prong of the army coming in here. These are going to do quite a lot of damage. And here we go. This is going to be the final attack, it looks like. And here we go. Oh, it looks like everything from YD is going down at the moment. This is heavily favoring Alarm at the moment. And I think I think YD is actually done now. That was an amazing comeback from Alarm. He just... He managed to expand so well. I mean, YD had map control almost the whole game. He did a very good job. But after, as he says, he let his economy drop and then he died. That is going to be it, guys. That was an amazing game. Two diamond level players. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. That was one of the best games I've ever casted. But I'm hoping that I might be able to get a master's level game um, for in a couple videos. So definitely subscribe if you want to see some master's level gameplay coming out soon. I hope you guys enjoyed um, if you do, please leave a like, leave a comment, and then subscribe, of course, if you want to see more videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.